Happy Monday, tennis fans. I'm James, and I've got your Tennis Now Tennis News. We'll start you off with some results. There were five tournaments this week, so get ready for a quick rundown. Serena Williams won her first title of the year at the Bank of the West Classic in Stanford yesterday. In what was her third tournament of the year, she absolutely blitzed through the draw. She beat Anastasia Rodionova of Australia 6-love, six 6-love six in less than an hour in the first round, and then beat Maria Sharapova 6-1-6-3 and Sabina Lazicki 6-1-6-2 to make the final. Serena went on to beat Marion Bartoli 7-5-6-1 in the final to win her 38th career title. The only player who took a set off of Serena last week was Maria Karolinko in the second round. Now at the uh, WTA's other tournament, the City Open in College Park, Maryland, Nadia Petrova beat Shahar Payer 7-5-6-2 to win her first title of the year and the 10th of her career. On the men's side, 22-year-old Alexander Dolgopolov overcame a partisan crowd to beat Maron Cilic 6-4-3-6-6-3 at the ATP Studena Croatia Open, giving him his first career ATP title. At the Swiss Open, Marcel Granollier of Spain upset three top 20 players en route to his second ATP title. In the quarterfinal, he beat Stanislas Wawrinka, then Mikhail Yuzhny, and then Fernando Verdasco in the final. Finally, at the Farmers Classic in Los Angeles, Ernest Gulbis won his first title of the year after he narrowly defeated Marty Fish 5-7-6-4-6-4. The win is a good sign for the talented 22-year-old as his ranking had fallen almost 50 spots to number 84, and he had only won two consecutive matches in two tournaments this year. In Los Angeles, he looked like a totally different player though. He beat Xavier Melis in the first round and then upset Juan Martin Del Potro, who was actually favored to win the title, in the quarterfinals. His win against Fitch was his first over a top 10 player since November of last year. So, how do these results affect the rankings? Well, Gulbis had plenty of points in the game because he lost in the second round of the Farmers Classic last year. The result takes him up to number 55. Meanwhile, Dogopolov's win takes him to number 21, which is one place short of his career high. And Fish's result pushes him up to number 8, matching his career high he set in early July. Now, Granollier also reached a career high of number 33 after his win in Switzerland. On the women's side, Serena is back into the top 80. Her win in Stanford took her up 90 spots to number 79. And it's a rise that will probably continue as she doesn't have any points to defend this year. Now, with all that out of the way, let's go to Lauren Lynch to find out what's going on in the lives of the players. Thank you, James. Now for some juice. It seems as though world number 11 Andrea Petkovic will join top American Marty Fish in the attempt to set the Guinness Book of World Records for the most people who bounce tennis balls on their racket in one location. This will take place on August 26th of this year at the Billie Jean King Tennis Center at Flushing Meadows in New York. Wilson Racket Global Director of Marketing Mike Steck said, We can't wait to see what dance moves she busts out after we break the record. Known for the Petco dance and the moonwalk after her victories, Pekovic knows how to have fun with fish. She is channeling her inner child and is encouraging kids of all ages to join them in their feet. In fact, the first 500 kids to get involved will receive a free Wilson Jr. racket and a can of balls from Wilson. Go to the Wilson Tennis Facebook page to get signed up and win a trip to New York to join the world record attempt. Are you going to be there? I know tennis now will. Novak Djokovic has seemed to make a new friend. The Joker has been training in LA for the hardcourt season and has been chilling with his new BFF, Ashton Kutcher. The two have been twittering and bromancing each other on and off the court. Ashton tweeted out, at Joker Nole, thanks for the lesson, the slice heard around the world, dot dot dot. Nole tweeted back, at App Blusk, pleasure, you got everything going now in your game. Jumping forehand, angled backhand, salami slice, dot dot dot. Do you think that Novak Djokovic is asking to get punked? I think you might. All right. Nike athletes Maria Sharapova and Lee Na are competing in more ways than on the court. Lee is trying to unofficially edge Sharapova on endorsement deals. She is the reigning French Open champ and has signed over seven endorsement deals worth $42 million, about $2 million and $3.5 million annually for three years, according to her agent, Max Eisenbud. This makes her the second highest earning female athlete in the world behind Sharapova, who makes $24 million a year alone. Lee signed with Mercedes-Benz, Tech King Life Insurance, Rolex, Haagen-Dazs, and much more. 
Are you shocked that Serena or Venus aren't in second place? Let us know. Meanwhile, Caroline Wozniacki joined the likes of famous icons like Katy Perry, ballerinas of Stats Ballet in Berlin, DJ Baby G, Chinese superstar Li Binghing, photographer Sneaker Queen, and more for the Adidas FW11 campaign with the motto, All In on the Mind. Check it out. Back to you, James. Thanks, Lauren. Well, this week we've got three tournaments going on. The ATP is wrapping up its post-Wimbledon clay court season at the Bed at Home Championships in Kitzbühel, Austria. And the U.S. Open Series makes its stop at the Lake Mason uh, Tennis Classic in Washington, D.C. Juan Ignacio Chela and Feliciano Lopez are the top seeds in Austria, while Gael Monfils leads a field that includes Marty Fish, Victor Troisky, and David Nalbandian in, in Washington. At the Mercury Insurance Open in Carlsbad, California, Veres Vonareva and and Andrea Petkovic are the top seeds. Now to stay up to date on all of these matches and all of the news from the world of tennis, check us out at tennisnow.com. You can find live scores and all of the up-to-date news. As always, thanks for watching and have an excellent week, everybody.